Good morning, everyone. Welcome. My name is Menachem Creditor. It's my honor to serve as scholar in residence and rabbi for UJ Federation of New York. We bring you Torah and music, blessing and community every weekday. We've been doing so since March 18th, 2020. Today is Friday, January 5th, 2024. It's been a privilege and a blessing to be part of this community for almost four years straight of Torah every weekday morning, of finding new friends, just to say good morning every weekday morning. 964 times, friends, we have found each other to say, as Linda just did, good Shabbos, kind souls. To see friends, to see all of you, has been an enormous privilege. We've seen each other through things thick and thin, ups and downs, and right now, it is the 91st day of a very complicated part of our people's history. And being with you makes it a little bit better. So thank you, everyone, for being part of this community yet again. Let's see who is on... Facebook, so I can say hello to you. Ashley and Catherine, good morning. Lydia and Sharon, Arlene, Marsha, Amy and Hannah, Minna, good morning. Hi, Candy. It's good to see all of you. Hope that you and yours are safe and well. All right, let's take a breath, sing a blessing, learn some Torah, and get ready for a good Shabbos. talk a little Torah. It's Parshat Shemot, and in this first Torah portion of the book of Exodus, we find ourselves in familiar territory, but not just familiar because it's way back then, familiar because these Torah portions, really since the beginning of reading the Torah cycle this year, which began, of course, Simchat Torah, October 7th, everything has felt both very different and terrifyingly familiar. There is something about being forgotten, our humanity being forgotten, our history being forgotten. Well, that's how this Parsha begins, with Vayaka Melech Hadash Asher Lo Yadat Yosef, a new king arose who did not know Joseph. It's impossible to truly imagine that Pharaoh, a new Pharaoh of any generation, after Joseph was the second in line who saved all of Egypt and the world by interpreting that Pharaoh's dreams. It's impossible to imagine that any Pharaoh would arise who did not know that history. It's impossible. Now, there are examples in modern history, in America at least, recently, where when a president came into office, their first executive order was to erase their predecessor's name from the State Department's literature. That has happened. But we understand the word pharaonic, which is a way of making Pharaoh's name an adjective. That kind of revisionist history, erasing where we come from, where anyone comes from, or what has happened, is a way of doing what many have done to the Shoah, which is what we call revisionist history, erasing or altering the facts. 
that has also begun since October 7th, where only recently have some organizations, including the UN, paid attention to the depth and depravity of what Hamas did, especially to Israeli women, but to all Jews all around the world. That still happens on college campuses, it still happens on the streets, it still happens including in high school basketball games where recently, I won't use the name of the school because it's better just to know that it's out there than it is to think that this is the entire description of some children's experiences, but a Jewish basketball team somewhere in America was taunted with terrible slurs during the game just this week. We have work to do, and actually this Torah portion gives us the wisdom of knowing we are not the first to face the harshness. So what I want to do is look at a very specific part of the Torah portion that we haven't looked at this week, just for a minute, and to make a suggestion about what we do with all of this horrifying resonance. What do we do with it? because you and I also might have the experience of being overwhelmed by it. How do I face all those things that I just mentioned? How do we face a world that 91 days after October 7th still resonates with the harshness of October 7th? What do we do with a world that seems to perpetuate the willful ignorance and malicious intention of Pharaoh? What do we do with that? Because to not acknowledge it would be to condemn ourselves and our children to a future without any preparation where they will not be treated with justice or kindness. What do we do with all of that? So I want to make a suggestion based on something in this Parsha. In this Parsha, Moshe encounters the burning bush. And it's a, an incredible sight. Midrash, not the text of the Torah itself, but later imaginative embellishments, suggest that the bush had always been burning, but what made this moment different is that Moses paused and saw it, noticed and wondered, how is it possible? The Hebrew is beautiful here. Vayomer Moshe, this is chapter 3, verse 3, Asura na et ha Madua lo yivar hasne. I must turn aside to look at this marvelous sight. Why doesn't the bush burn up? It's important to realize that what makes Moses different is that he pauses and notices with wonder something that has already been there in the world. That makes something really, really different, doesn't it? Abraham Joshua Heschel, of blessed memory, was once introduced in a very full auditorium as the prophet that he was, with someone reading almost all his entire resume of professional accomplishments, the books he'd published, and everyone was there to hear from this wise man. And there he was, walks up to the microphone and says, ladies and gentlemen, on the way to this speech today, I witnessed a miracle. And everyone leans forward, of course. And he said, on the way in today, I saw a flower. The first piece of wisdom I hope that we will gain as we go into this coming Shabbat is that one of the things that made Moses so extraordinary is that he paused and saw the world around him with wonder, even when he was living under complicated and harsh circumstances. I hope, as I used to say at the beginning of our broadcast at the beginning of the pandemic in March of 2020, I hope that when we're learning Torah, you are somewhere near a window and you're looking out at the sky. I hope that as we pray for health, for our families, safety for our people, and justice in our world, that you to take good enough care of yourself to keep your eyes open to wonder. It's hard. It is hard. It must have been hard for Moshe. And one of the things that I wouldn't ignore at all, I would hate to miss as we get ready for Shabbos, is what Moses does, what Moshe does, how he earns the right to the call that God offers him. When he gets closer to the bush and he takes off his sandals as God tells him, God says, I am sending you. Go. 
similar to the Lech Lecha moment. In fact, God calls Moshe by name. They've never encountered each other, at least as far as Moshe has known. And God calls Moshe by name, and Moshe says, Hineini, I am here. So not only does Moses demonstrate the capacity to see wonder in the world, he also does, and this is going to be a strange kind of commentary, he does what I once heard LeBron James do after a game, where he made all of the difference. Someone interviewed him right after the game and said, how did you do that? What, what is it that you are in your team that triggered this energy in everyone? He said, I make myself available. You want to know the definition of the word hineni? I am available to you. So not only should we pause and notice the sky and the flowers, we should also notice the human beings around us and make ourselves available. Listen to their hearts. Be available to them. And there's one more step, which is this incredible humility. Moshe doesn't understand his power, and he eventually will. But in this moment where he is called, he says, Mi anochi ki elech. Who am I? Who am I? I can't do that. I can't accomplish that. And God says over and over, yes, you are. And when Moshe says, who am I? God says, it doesn't make a difference who you are. I'm with you. You're not alone. And these moments that we are facing as a world, big and small, especially as Jews, 91 days into the harshest period of our history since the Shoah. That's what this is. Let's be clear. Let's be brave enough to be honest. This is incredibly harsh. We have to remain open to wonder. We have to notice our fellow human being beyond the tribe too. And we have to make ourselves available, though the demands are very heavy. We have to be available to each other. We have to be available to ourselves. And when we face this world, especially in these moments, as Jews, we have to also recognize that being available to the other is only possible if we are alive and here. Which means, you might say, me anochi, who are you? The answer is, friends, you're a Jew. The world reminds you, even when you forget. Instead of you, I could have said me. Even when I say, ah, it's so far away and it's not about me. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. American Jewish children playing basketball this week were reminded by terrible anti-Semitism on the court that it is us. Are we available to our children? Which means that we have to acknowledge the moment, which means we need the capacity to acknowledge the moment, which means we have to fuel our soul's resilience and strength by noticing the wonder of the world too. Being present. Being present. Being present. I invite you, friends. I invite you just before we sing our way into a good Shabbos, please God, may it be one, to look out the window. Ashley, we're all family. So glad that we're sharing this together. The power of this moment is in facing it with humanity and honesty and courage. Let's do that. Let's decide we can do that because we know we must, let's also decide that we can. All right, friends. We're going to sing the Shabbos song, because it helps. It really, really does. And then we'll sing Hatikva, and then we're going to go into a Shabbos. And it's going to give us the strength for after Shabbos, right? Let's decide that that's also possible. Here we go.
breath with that power, with the energy of getting ready for Shabbos. Let's add our souls into the collective Hatikva we're about to offer, and may it travel far. May our sisters and brothers in Israel and around the world, may our family members and friends and neighbors who are still in Gaza, fighting and those held captive, may we be strong. May they feel our strength. May these prayers that we wear on our necks travel far through heaven all the way into their bodies so that they can know how loved they are. Here we go. Yehudi Homia Ulefate Mizrach Kadima Ain Letzion Sophia Ulo Avda Tikvate Nu Hatikvabat Shnot alpain, liot am chofshi, be'art seinu, eretz zion virushalayim. Liot am chofshi, be'art seinu, eretz zion Virushalayim. Bless you, friends. Bring them home now. Am Yisrael Chai. Have a good Shabbos, everyone. See you on Monday.